Hi and welcome to my first video this year and topic of this video is C compiler for Commodore 64 machines. Uh, now usually when I'm doing C programming for Commodore 64 in most cases I use CC65 compiler but not today. Today we're going to use Oscar 64. Now Oscar 64 is very powerful C compiler for obviously uh, Commodore 64 machines and the best way to start this video is with small piece of code written in basic from last year VCCC 2023 competition and then rewrite that code in the C language and see how Oscar 64 can handle things for us there. Also we are going to explore what else can we do with the Oscar 64 so yeah let's begin. So the task of the last VCCC 2023 was to create this kind of shape, this diamond grid. Um, this grid is constructed from 3x3 three three diamonds connected together or 19 rows and 90 columns. And what you're looking right here is my solution. Uh, so let me show you the code. Um, it's not very beautiful. It's not even short enough. It's not definitely not the shortest code out there. My solution was based on simple logic, uh, which says that uh, the sum of the current row and column uh, must be always three. In case that it is three, then we print asterisk. In every other case, we print empty space, and that's how the whole shape is created. Uh, but like I, like I said, it's not very beautiful at all. So because of that, I'm going to use another solution which is much more beautiful uh it's not mine of course um i'm not really sure who the author is i know i pick it up from uh, facebook uh, basic group uh, basic programming language group on facebook um, let me show you the code so this is the code um and it's very very um elegant and beautiful uh simply because of this part right here um this uh, variable c um, and the whole logic is just to calculate or better to say to check whether or not the difference of squares from columns and row, uh, rows um, is divisible by six or not um, in other words if we divide the difference of squares with six will we get the whole number or not in case that we have the whole number then we will print out asterisk in every other case we will not and that's it <laughs> it's very very uh, elegant solution this not not here it's actually short uh, version of simple uh, int uh, function so here we just check whether or not uh, the value of variable c is the whole number that's it so if the c is uh, different from integer of c then we don't have the whole number that's it um, in every other case if it's not bigger that means that is equal and in that case that we, we have the whole number so yeah i really like this solution and if we run it it works perfectly it's even faster than mine <laughs> um, yeah difference of squares very mathematically very very beautiful um, I really like that and this is the solution that you're going to use to rewrite it in the C language and then compile it with the uh, Oscar 64 so yeah let's let's do that okay so what we have here is just include two standard libraries C and now we need our main function so we will create the main like we would do in normal C language, nothing special, and we will return zero, of course. Okay, so now we need two for loops. So for that reason, we are going to define x and y variables, and we are going to build two for loops uh, for y and for x. So y is going to be from minus 9 to y um, bigger 
uh, less or equal to 9, uh, y plus plus. This is our first for loop. And for x is going to be um, from 0 to x less or equal to 18 x plus uh, so, yeah so far so good so let me say that now we're, we're going to calculate um, our difference of squares and divide that with six so for that reason we are going to need a um, new variable and this time we need a floating point variable so um, we will need float variable t and t is going to be equal to x multiplied by x minus y multiplied by y and everything divided with six and all we need to do uh, like we would do in normal C because all of these variables are integers and our uh, number 6 is also integer uh, we need to say that we want floating point result that's all that we need to do so that's that's okay now the next thing that we need uh, is a little bit of logic to see whether or not this T variable um, the value of this t variable is whole number or not. Uh, for that purpose, we will need another uh, variable, this time integer, and let's call it d. And we will use the same logic like um, the creator um, of that little basic code, or the author of that basic code did. So we will say that variable d is equal um, 42 minus 10 so the variable is going to be um, have value either 42 which is asterisk or is going to be 32 which is space that's it uh, and then we are going to multiply this with a little bit of logic and we will say if variable t is greater than um, the whole um, number of t uh, and in our case, uh, to, to get the whole number, um, we need to use a uh, function floor. So we, that's mathematical function floor, uh, variable t. And we need to say that this is now integer. And that's about it. Now we will have our variable d equal either 42 or 32. That's it. And all we need to do is now print our character d on the screen. And when one line is done, when we go through all x values, we need to go in the next row. So in that case, uh, for that purpose, we will print new line. That's it. That's the whole code. That's the whole code. And now we're going to build it using Oscar 64. So we have Oscar 64. Now we have our VCC 2023 um, C program. That's how I call it and minus n and it's done it's done and what we got now is prg file that we can run on commodore 64 of course so let me do that so if i list our little program you can see that it has a little bit of basic uh, command inside just to call system function uh, on address 2061 so if you run this here's our code very beautiful elegant and working nicely now let me show you something else um, let's go back to the code a little bit more this here this piece of code 
has nothing to do with Commodore 64 or 6502 CPUs or 8-bit machines. This is generic C code. It's very simple, very elegant. Um, it uses floats, uh, includes standard libraries, and we can build it to run on Commodore 64, but also we can build this to run on any other machine. So the same code, I will change absolutely nothing. Let's try to build it on my machine, on my PC, and see what shall we get. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's try to do that. So the same code, we will use PCC compiler, of course. Uh, and we are going to build our VCC, same code as before, um, minus LM, minus O, and we are going to create VCCC2023 executable file. Yeah, it's compiled perfectly. So let's try to run it here on my PC. So VCC 2023, here we go. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, here it is, that's the code. Of course, this is possible because we didn't use any um, specific function related to Commodore 64 or 6502 CPUs. So that for that reason, we can build it for several platforms, including Commodore 64. Um, but this is the beauty of Oscar 64. It really did the job perfectly. <laughs> I mean, we have floating point numbers, we have everything. Uh, we have standard libraries and we have a lot of uh, Commodore 64 libraries as well that I will show you a little bit of later. Um, also, I want to show you something else which is peek and poke. There are two commands that we really, really need <laughs> uh, on Commodore 64. Uh, there, is any, there isn't any peek and poke on, in Oscar 64 because we don't need them. Um, that's also one beautiful part of this compiler. The creator of this compiler really did the best to have native C language and native C programming logic built in Oscar 64. For that reason, uh, we don't need peaks and pokes. We have pointers, and I will show you how we can use them uh, very easily and in even more powerful way than we can do with peaks and pokes in Commodore 64 Basic. So yeah, let me show you that. So instead of peaks and pokes, which are actually um, just writing or reading from certain address position, uh, we can use pointers. So yeah, let's let's define our uh, addresses. So let's define our um, screen, which is of course at address um, zero four hundred. Uh, of course, we need to define this as string of characters, array of characters, sorry. Yeah. And we are going to define our um, screen uh, color. So our screen uh, color is at D12, I believe, D0. Uh, 12. No, that's border, that screen is at screen color, and we're going to define border color 20. As you, as you can see, we can easily use hex values here. We don't need to convert them to decimal. Um, so, yeah, that's also one benefit. Um, so, how can we use this? Well, for instance, we can just say okay um, border color so let's change border color uh, to one that's it um, 
screen color now the screen color is screen color in three that's it and we can place um, some characters on screen so let's do screen on position zero which is top left corner let's place one simple asterisk that's it and on the second position on the screen we can place next character and let's do one more we are going to change border color screen color and we're going to place three characters on the screen uh, from top left corner first three positions um, that's it so let's try to build this little piece of code so now we have something that is specific for Commodore 64 because we use specific addresses here so yeah let's let's build that and see how that will work um dum, 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 dum. demo c minus n uh term starts with invalid token uh c i do have some errors give me the fucking shape okay i did have some errors in my code uh yep now we have a little demo so let's try to run it and here we go um it's poor choices of color it's really awful but like you see that we changed the border color we changed the screen color and we placed three characters at the beginning of our screen so it's very very elegant um way how we can um use pointers um so as you can see we don't actually need um we don't actually need peaks and pokes um of course this was all about pokes so let's try to peak uh for peak we will need to peak at certain position in the memory so read the certain uh, value from certain position in the memory so let's try to read um let's say this um character value value on second position on the screen so to do that we need let's say um you can use char or in whatever uh, let's read char that it's going to be um, C equals screen one that's it and now we are going to print uh, our character as a character on the screen uh, C and we can do something like this we're going to create new line and then two new lines and then we're going to print the character and after that we're going to print that character as value value integer value so we're going to use that as well so let's try to do that so again we're going to build it yeah, built perfectly. As you can see, we have our character print on the screen. Here we go. It's nice. Uh, we did mess up something with printing the value of our character. Uh, so it's not E, but per se should be decimal number 43. Here we go. So, yeah, I'm the only problem that i had uh, was to print bloody hell editor uh, right so yeah um we don't print integer we print decimal value of 
variable c uh, than we have value of 42, uh, 43, sorry. So, yeah. Uh, also, one beautiful thing about these uh, using pointers, uh, we also can use them in a very clever way to clear the screen or fill the entire area with some values um, using simple memset function like we do in C, <laughs> of course. So before we do all these changes, um, let's try to clear the screens. We'll simply say memset, we were going to fill entire block of memory with something. Uh, of course, we're going to use uh, screen position. Then we're going to use um, let's say uh, character petsky character uh, 160 and how many times we're going to use 1000 times because that's the area of our screen so yeah this should clear the screen for us so let's try to do that uh, it doesn't understand the mem set mem set is part of the string mm, yeah, okay 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 what we need to do is include string uh, because memset uh, function is part of the string library i forgot all about that oh i forgot i use funny little character oh what have i done <laughs> um yeah we need to do something else 32 is the space ah uh, bloody hell why did i do that okay one more time here we go and we have clear the screen very beautiful and pointers are fast <laughs> blazing fast um so yeah very nice I would like to show you one more thing that is like built in uh, in Oscar 64. It's very, very powerful thing to do, um, to use, um, and that's recursion. So there is, without any problem, we can do recursion with Oscar 64. And uh, in most cases, um, uh, when you want to demonstrate recursion, you use fractals or something like that. Um, we are not going to use that. We are going to use decimal to binary conversion. We are going to build a function that is going to convert the decimal number to binary number. That, that's about it. And we will see how recursion can help us do this. Um, if you take a look at um, kind of default um, loop that converts decimal to binary number it's uh, modulo by two then divide by two and then uh, whatever you get you need to reverse because you get from the last significant bit to the most significant bit as a result and then you have to flip it over and print out on the screen from the most significant bit to the last significant bit um, we are not going to do any of that here we're going to use recursion to do that for us without saving into array or something like that so yeah let's try to do that 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 will be uh very interesting to see uh where are we okay so we have our main function uh but like i mentioned before we're going to build new function um let's call it convert so maybe um decimal to binary uh, that's multi binary, yeah, that will be. And uh, as parameter, we will have that symbol number or integer. So that's our number n. That's about it. This is our function. So, what we are going to do here, we are going to define another uh, variable. An integer a and we're going to use that so we will say if n exists or if it's if it's not null um, then we are going to perform some uh, additional work here 
so what we are going to do is simply use um, bitwise logic and check uh, the last significant bit uh, in our uh, integer number that's it if the last significant bit in our number is one um, then our variable a is going to be one that's about it uh, in any other case our variable a is of course going to be zero so either is one or it's zero there is nothing else after that we are not going to do anything with our variable a yet uh, we are going to shift our number by one position to the right and then call this function one more time so d to d and then we are going to shift our number for one position to the right that's it and then after that after we call that function one more time call itself uh, we are going to print our variable um, a on the screen uh, in form of um, number like a digit and it's variable a and that's about it so all we need to do now is call our function from our main function so let's um, that's about to binary and the number would be I don't know 25 maybe so we will convert decimal number 25 to binary uh, representation of that number so how this function um, works so you see before we print out our variable a result of variable a on the screen we call this function one more time we shift that number uh, by one position to the right and we call the same function one more time so before even any of this print executes this function will be called so many times and the number will be shift as many times as we reach the end in case that we reach the end then this um, function will this recursion will stop so we are not going to call again 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 to infinity so we need to be a bit more careful with this so after that after all of these recursions are created and calling one each other creating a chain of um, events then on return uh, this print from each of these calls this line will be executed so that means that the first print first execution of this print command will happen at most significant bit so that means that most significant bit will be print out on the screen first and then so on and the last one is going to be the less significant bit or the one that we tested the first time when we call this function so there is no need to reverse the order of the bits that we get um, everything is done using a recursion and just clever positioning of um, printing out the values on the screen and calling the function again and again um, until we are done so let's try to uh, compile this and uh, test it out on Commodore 64 so it's um, D to B C there you go so 25 decimal converted to binary is 11001 this little program again it's really not related to Commodore 64 uh, for that reason we can build it on any machine so let's try to build it online here so we need to gcc and then we need d to be uh, c and we need output d to b okay 
and if I call D to be and execute this file, yeah, here we go. One one zero zero one. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so Oscar sixty four comes with a bunch of examples that you can see here. Um, and this is the really nice place because you can explore how the things are done and how each of these libraries are used. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at some of those examples. So for instance, we have fractals and this is where I play a lot. So let's find something interesting. Uh, yeah. So what do we have here? Yeah, again, playing with the, playing with the circle and colors. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Oh, we have fire. Okay. Well, this is not part of the examples. <laughs> this is my my. Uh, piece of code there, definitely. Uh, yep, nice. Okay, let's see what do we have next. Uh, Ractals, uh, games, I'll show that a bit later. So in high resolution mode, yeah. Uh, let me show you fractal tree there. So uh, again, we are setting our week in high resolution mode. Um, initialize high resolution mode and screen. What do we have here? Uh, this screen and we have the main control function. Okay, and then the main function is right here, and here we have recursion as well. <laughs> so this is function to draw the line, which is nice, and then we have recursion. Yeah, even better example of recursion. Let's see what this does. Okay, so we have a couple of C64 um, libraries. Vic is here, high resolution bitmap. Yeah, very nice. Oh, here it is. Pen press. Uh -huh. Nice. Nice. Okay, let's see what else do we have. So, wow, what do we have here? Uh, we have sprites library. Okay, so we have um, pre-calculated constants for uh, sinus and cosinus already for in our code. Uh, then we have a bunch of definition pragma k okay. uh, digit by okay so we uh, embedded some uh, binary graphics inside uh, disable interrupt so we can use piece of assembly code as well that's really nice and we are enabling raster interrupts via direct paths okay uh, initializing sprites in single line of code <laughs> And then we are using whatever this is, uh, unroll movement loop for performance, advanced animation, sort rit ritual sprite by Y position, wait for raster interrupt, update sprite, sort raster interrupt. Yeah, but there's not much code to it. Let's see what this does. So we, can, we should have 32 sprites. Um, on the screen. Um, oh, this is nice. 
This is really fast. Really, really nice. This is not mine. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. And those uh, predefined uh, sinus and cosinus uh, values are used to create this uh, pattern, to, to create this move path for to move sprites. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so what else do we have? Oh, we have a uh, 64 um, sprite example. Oh, nice. Real nice. Okie dokie. Yeah, uh, there is a couple of mm, missile command. Yeah, that should be. So let's open this. This should be whole game <laughs> uh yeah we have all bunch of things here um uh, okay of course we have um some binaries i'm assuming this is for sprites okay yes yeah, sprites oh uh, sorry the comment so we have sprite assets here in this binary file and this is for our character uh set here have some struct definitions, missile, status initials, oh, old, y, core, core reset, status, explosion start, yeah, explosion, animation for explosion, missile start, okay, okay, let's, let's check out the game. Ooh, ready player one. Oh. Ooh, oh, wow. nice. Oh, god damn it. Ooh. Oh, level two. Ah. So let's see what will happen if we let one missile. A uh, couple of missiles go through. Oh, we have destruction. Wow, nice. Oh, level three. So, what else do we have? Um, yeah, all bunch of things. Uh, maybe try one more game after. Oh, wow! Look at this. Ooh. We have sound. Do you hear sound? Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. This is fast. <laughs> oh, ooh. I don't know how to play this game. But this is. Fun. Okay. I don't. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> of course, I just change the text <laughs> but yeah it's really nice mm. so what else do we have um uh this is of course uh oscar 64 demo um i just change uh these are character characters so special kind of um custom characters and i just change the text scrolling text so this is scrolling text on the screen um so yeah uh, let's try to see this um let's see how this looks like oh nice <laughs> yeah and by the way, this is all that I have for you today. So until next time, goodbye. It's interesting. I should put music here. Mm.